Hi everyone, I'm Robin Cannon, and I'm going into my final year in the Master of Art Conservation program at Queen's University, specializing in paper conservation. Queen's University is located in Kingston, Ontario, Canada, and I'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement. In Canada, land acknowledgements are spoken at the beginning of public events to recognize and show respect for Indigenous peoples. So today I'd like to acknowledge the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples who have been displaced from their homelands and territories upon which Kingston was built. By acknowledging this traditional territory, I hope to recognize its longer history, one that predates the establishment of the earliest European colonies. It is also to acknowledge this territory's significance for the Indigenous peoples that continue to live upon it, people whose practices and spiritualities are tied to the land. I often feel a relationship to the land myself, and I love the beautiful colors of the trees on the Queen's University campus that greet me on my walk into the conservation lab each day during the autumn season. As part of my research in the lab over the last year, I have examined some practical aspects of working with nanocellulose film from a paper conservation perspective. Nanocellulose is currently used and researched in a wide variety of industries, such as medicine, pharmacy, food, and electronics. Nanocellulose is an emerging material in the conservation field due to its properties of transparency and high mechanical strength. Nanocellulose has potential to be used in paper conservation for tear repair and paper stabilization purposes when the use of Japanese tissues or other repair papers may not be suitable. In other areas of conservation, nanocellulose has been studied as a material to repair, stabilize, and strengthen canvases and other textiles. Nanocellulose is composed of nano-sized cellulose fibrils. The fibrils are typically isolated from a cellulose source through high pressure, temperature, and velocity. The process results in a product that is nearly 100% cellulose. The most common type of nanocellulose used in paper conservation to date is microfilbrillated cellulose, abbreviated as MFC. MFC includes amorphous and crystalline regions of the cellulose polymer. Nanocellulose normally arrives from the manufacturer as a gel-like suspension. In paper conservation research, conservators have used nanocellulose in a few different ways. Firstly, by evaporation casting the gel into a film, and secondly, by applying the gel in solution directly to a paper object. I began my research by exploring some best practice techniques to evaporation cast nanocellulose film. This exploration was largely guided by Remy Dreyfus de Saigny's 2017 article entitled Nanocellulose Films in Art Conservation. I obtained MFC in a 3% stock solution from Cellulose Lab, a company located in Eastern Canada. The source of the cellulose in the MFC was Northern Bleached Softwood Craft Pulp. Typical fibril size for this nanocellulose is approximately 0.05 microns widthwise and can be up to several hundred microns long. In the casting process, the nanocellulose is weighed and added to an appropriate amount of distilled water to reach a 0.2% solution. The solution is agitated on a stir plate for 15 to 20 minutes before being poured in an appropriate dish. In my climate, the water evaporates over the course of three or four days, and you're left with a dry film with a resulting thickness of approximately 10 microns. I've learned that the key to creating a successful film mainly lies in the type of dish the nanocellulose is left to evaporate in. I began by using glass petri dishes. This is something I do not recommend as the nanocellulose film sticks to glass in earnest, especially around the outside walls of the dish and it's extremely hard to remove the film from the dish without tearing it. I then moved on to polystyrene petri dishes. 
which worked better than glass, but still resulted in a fair amount of stuck film. Small silicone molds worked well. However, the larger silicone molds that I tried did not. Larger molds made it harder to get the MFC to disperse and dry evenly over the entirety of the surface. And this results in uneven sheet formation and subsequent sheet tearing. Polytetrafluoral ethylene, otherwise known as PTFE or its brand name Teflon, hands down worked the best out of all the dishes. The nanocellulose films created in the Teflon dish did not stick at all and slid right out. I think there is a lot of potential to use Teflon dishes for evaporation casting films, especially with other forms of nanocellulose, such as cellulose nanocrystals, otherwise known as CNC, or in situations that might warrant adding an adhesive directly to the film. Uh, however, Teflon dishes can be quite expensive and if you need to make a lot of nanocellulose, this may not be the best option if you're on a budget. In the end, disposable thin walled polystyrene Petri dishes also worked quite satisfactory. The film still sticks slightly, but unlike in the previous polystyrene dishes tried, the thin walls of the dish can be gently coaxed to allow air under the sides of the film, as seen in the demonstration video. Because of this, the film separates very well from the dish. I've tried larger, thin-walled, disposable polystyrene Petri dishes as well, and I have been able to make successful sheets in dishes as large as 14 centimeters in diameter. When compared with Teflon dishes, the disposable type of polystyrene dishes are very cost-effective and are easier to source for purchase. Out of this exploration, and because I was using so many different types of dishes, it prompted, prompted me to simplify the measurement process. So if you'd like to create some of your own nanocellulose film, consider using the online calculator I developed, which is available at the web address on the slide. Using Dreyfus de Saigny's procedure, I was able to determine a formula associating nanocellulose mass to surface area. My calculator follows this association, however, with slightly more water added. This is because I often found it hard to ensure the nanocellulose solution dispersed evenly over the dish, as surface tension and cohesive forces of the distilled water prevented this. To be clear, uh, the volume of water isn't too important, as it evaporates away. What is important is the mass of nanocellulose left in the container. The calculator lets you input specific variables and then tells you the exact amounts of nanocellulose and water required to create a sheet in any round or rectangular dish. Additionally, by using this calculator, the resulting formulation should leave you with no leftover wasted nanocellulose. Now that I have refined my technique at evaporation casting nanocellulose film, I am researching the applicability of working with nanocellulose and aqueous adhesives, specifically wheat starch paste. Nanocellulose film is sensitive to the direct application of water. As demonstrated here, when water is applied directly to a piece of nanocellulose film, the wet film loses stability and becomes pulpy, making any use of the film problematic. Additionally, once it's dried, the film will have shrunk slightly, uh, potentially causing planar deformation. Conservators Dreyfus de Saigny and Knopf and Utter found it difficult to work with nanocellulose film and wheat starch paste specifically. Currently, the only recommended adhesive for application on nanocellulose film is hydroxypropyl cellulose or Kusel G in ethanol at 5% rate per volume. Although ethanol does not affect nanocellulose film in the same way water does, it is important for conservators to have other options for adhesives due to the unique properties of each object we treat. For example, the media on your object may be soluble in ethanol, or the gloss that Kusel G imparts once dried may not match a matte object. 
Therefore, over the next academic year, my research will focus on expanding the current understanding of how nanocellulose reacts with wheat starch paste, developing a standard technique to successfully use wheat starch paste with nanocellulose film, and lastly, conducting instrumental analysis on successful wheat starch paste and nanocellulose applications in order to examine the opacity, gloss, and strength of those applications. I have already begun exploratory studies into using wheat starch paste with nanocellulose in a variety of ways. I have successfully created remoistenable nanocellulose films, but their properties have not yet been tested. It is still too early to say if these remoistenable films will adhere firmly to treatment areas, and there are many other additional questions to answer. For example, will their opacity change once applied and will they cause planar deformation in the areas of application? My next focus will be on trying to understand to what extent swelling occurs to nanocellulose film when wheat starch paste is applied and compare those results to when 5% Kusel G in ethanol is applied. I'm excited about working with nanocellulose more closely and ideally through studying the practical application of wheat starch paste with nanocellulose film, conservators will develop a better understanding of nanocellulose as it relates to treatment possibility with aqueous adhesives. I'd like to thank my supervisors, Rosaline Hill and Allison Murray for their ever inspiring enthusiasm, support and encouragement of this research. Richard Yeomans for lending his technical expertise on the nanocellulose calculator and for his unending amount of patience and all of the students and organizers at the University of Zagreb Department of Art Conservation and Restoration for organizing this event. Thank you so much.